Hello to all that decide to watch this crazy ass redneck come up with another video. Well, tonight's video is going to be talking about the state of this damn country. One man's opinion, of course. With me, that's all it is. I don't belong to any survey group. I don't belong to any organization. Just me, mine, and my brain, and my Copenhagen. <clears throat> Times are getting real tough. The American people have lost their focus. They're more worried about what's around the next corner. What's the newest, shiniest, brightest thing that they can buy to shut their kids up? Parents have forgotten to be parents. Cops have turned into troops. <clears throat> well, politicians are still scumbags. But beer is still beer. At least for now. And lo and behold, for about another hour, the internet's still the internet. Our politicians in their ultimate wisdom, mainly the head idiot up in the White House, that black son of a bitch I've never trusted, never voted for, and criticized everybody that did. Because frankly, I wouldn't buy a pair of shoes from him if he gave me the money to pay for them. And I was walking barefoot through the snow. <clears throat> and it ain't because he's black. It's because I don't trust him. When you're in the Senate and all you do is say present without voting for a goddamn thing and all the time you're in there, you ain't worth a crap. My granddaddy used to say there comes a time when every man has to make a stand. If you're a man. I've never seen that. I've never seen that so-called man that's in the White House make a stand for anything. Oh, he's done a lot of apologizing. A lot of glad hand and he says buzzword he likes to use is though well let me tell you true you know <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you well you can tell me everything you want if it looks like shit smells like shit looks like shit it's shit what's it gonna take to get the American people to get off their ass turn off their smartphones turn off their television sets and God forbid sit at a dinner table and have a conversation with your family instead of texting each other we've become a country of strangers oh yeah we got a lot of friends on the internet we talk to yeah, ha, ha, hey I got friends I got friends I got friends you got friends so much. How come you're always alone? Riddle me that. If you want to bring <clears throat> thousands of refugees into this country, it ain't a matter we don't have room for them. You want to give them free housing, money, probably set them up in business. In other words, you're going to have a whole bunch more cigarette shops opening up, or 7 Elevens, or something like that. Something innocuous blends in with the neighborhood. My problem with that is the U.S. Bay has problems of their own. 
we got a homeless population that's out of control. You got yuppies buying up buildings just to rent them for thousands and thousands of dollars, which a couple of years ago would only cost about 600 bucks a month to rent. You got homeless veterans. You got mothers and children out living on the street, taking their life in their own hands. You got empty buildings standing empty in the cities that you could eat, the cities could easily open up into, hey, we'll give you this apartment for a year. If you have an address, you can get a job, something like that. Get somebody in office that says, hey, you want, you want to be on welfare? You want to be on general assistance? Hey, guess what? You're a single mother, you got four kids. We're going to put you in a group of other single mothers. And ever once a, once a week, you're going to be running the daycare center for their, their kids. Because they're going to be out holding highway signs or something. Doing something to earn the free money they get. Maybe this country, since it's turned into a police state, will decide to do drug testing on people that want welfare or general assistance. How many people on welfare or general assistance these days do you think could pass a drug test? The numbers are few. Yes, I have bad habits. I dip Copenhagen, I smoke cigarettes, and I drink four or five beers a night on weekends. If people don't like it, fuck them. I don't drive when I'm drinking. I stay home. And, at least for now, my home is my castle. I can do what the hell I want in it. main point of this video, if there is one, is we all need to wake the fuck up. Little by little, in the name of security, you're losing your rights. They're turning over internet control to the UN. To a bunch of countries that don't give a shit about human rights. China. Saudi Arabia. Iran. Our president's trying to get Russia bounced off the Security Council. At least that's the news reports I hear. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. Who knows? He's signing in a lot of laws. Did anybody catch the one where he's made it uh, illegal to say the Pledge of Allegiance in school? because it might offend somebody. If pledging allegiance to the flag of this great country is offensive to you, why in the fuck are you here? If your country was so great, why are you here? Why does every motherfucker that comes into this country try to change this country to match where one they left? Why was the reason you left? I know plenty of immigrants that have come from Vietnam, China, Cuba, Russia, that don't want to change a goddamn thing out here. They love it here. I even know some Muslims coming from Kenya, other Muslim countries, are not unhappy here.
They're not trying to change it. <clears throat> I'll be the first to admit, I walk in a store and I see a Muslim lady all wrapped up in cloth or you can only see her eyes. I give her two or three looks and I keep an eye on her because I don't trust them. That's my fault. But I'm not a trusting person anymore. When I was a young boy, I was very trusting. I'd trust anybody. But this world is not a trusting world. You got politicians that'll smile to your face and stab you in the back twice. In case they missed the first time. You got presidents that promise this, that, and the other and don't do a damn thing. You got congressmen that have been Congress in Congress since Christ was a child. I don't think it was meant to be a lifetime job. But it wasn't written out, so I guess it could be. Now, let's get to the meat of the issue. We have an important choice coming up in November if we're allowed to make it, and odds are that we won't be. As far as I'm concerned, you got two idiots running, or excuse me, two people running. You got Donald J. Trump running, a businessman, never been a politician in his life, though to be in business you have to be a politician. He's saying everything the American people want to hear. I like what he says. Do I completely trust him? Not a chance in hell. Then you got Hillary. She likes to go by the name of Hillary. But her full name is Hillary Rodham Clinton, at least as far as I know. And she is the wife of Bill Clinton, ex-president. Also rapist, from everything I've read. He's a guy that likes to stick his dick in anything that stands still long enough. But... I digress. I don't like Hillary. And I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. One, she's a conniving bitch. She's been, she's been in public eye for 30 years and has done nothing really. Two, when she was... When her husband was in the White House... And he had that illicit affair with Monica Lewinsky, uh, supposedly getting head in the White House. We spent millions of dollars investigating that. Imagine that. Millions of dollars, U.S. dollars, to investigate whether a man was unfaithful to his wife. When we have known all along he's been unfaithful to his wife because he had a track record a mile and a half long. Well, the problem with Hillary goes to this. She could have put a stop to all of it. Whether she could put a stop to Bill or not, I don't know. But I will say this. We didn't have to spend millions of dollars to investigate it. She could have just stood up there on that microphone she likes so damn much and say, this is a between me and my husband. Please give us the peace to settle it. And it would have gone away like the smoke of my cigarette in the wind. But, again, I digress. And she becomes Secretary of State. After fighting Obama to be president, 
Smith, I'm sure there was a backdoor deal made there. I'll give you Secretary of State if you drop out of the race. You know, oh well, so be it. Okay, we got... Oh, what's she called? What's she being called now? Butcher Benghazi. I remember a TV ad for Hillary when she was running for president. Who do you want to get the call at 3 o'clock in the morning? And she posed like she was awake and answering the phone. You know, hey, da 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 lifty doo da You know? Funny. When our ambassador made the call, she didn't answer. We had strike teams within striking distance. They never were released. But, again, I digress. The point is, the American people have to wake up, make a choice. My choice is for Donald J. Trump. I've said for years, we need a man in there or somebody in there that's not a lifetime politician. Maybe we can go back to taking care of our own place instead of trying to put out the world's fires. If somebody could tell me why we have 90% of our military scattered around the globe putting out other people's brush fires when they don't like us or respect us one damn bit. But they, they want our money. They want our loans, but they never pay them back. Oh, wait a minute, that sounds like the UN, who, if I recall, still owes us money. Oh, but they're gonna they're doing us a favor. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> what do I know? I'm just dumb redneck. You wanna bring in all these refugees, you wanna give them free food, free money jobs maybe you need to take a lesson from my granddad who told me once you don't you know you take care of home first if home is stable then you can worry about helping everybody else he also said you don't shit in your own backyard but if you live in a big city you're going to see shit everywhere point I'm trying to make is for God's sakes America you gotta wake up you gotta get your head out of your smartphones get it out of the TV set they'll grab your family up and cook a dinner put it at a kitchen table and make everybody turn the damn phones off and actually talk to each other when's the last time any American family did that Let's slow down on this trying to save the world. Let's save America. The United States of America. It can still be a great country. I've been around half the world. And from what I've seen, this is the greatest country on earth. But, again, that's one man's opinion. But if we don't, if we're not careful, and we don't start paying attention, there's not going to be any United States of America anymore. It's going to be a battleground. That's probably going to be one after this election, if we have it. Because no matter who wins, somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. Somebody's going to try to get the attack dogs going. But I happened to read the other day a transcript of a CNN interview 
of Mr. Obama, who was talking what he was going to do if Donald J. Trump was elected to the office. He was going to pull out that fancy pen of his and declare the American people's vote irrelevant because they're incompetent to make a decision. Incompetent. Big word. Heavy meaning. How many of you feel incompetent? Think on that for a minute. As for these clowns, they're trying to stir up race problems. There's always going to be race problems. Not everybody can get along. We're not designed that way. But you want to riot in the streets. You want to shoot up schoolyards or shopping malls. Just keep it up. You're giving him all the ammunition he needs to declare martial law and make all the elections null and void. If that's what you want, you want all-out warfare, a bunch of boys like me that call themselves gentlemen, call themselves veterans, are probably not going to put up with it. You do something that affects my family, I'm going to kill you. There ain't going to be no judge. There ain't going to be no jury. And I don't care how long it takes. I will kill you. Pure and simple. And you got a whole bunch of people out there that think like I do. But I don't really have to worry about it because... Very few people ever watch my videos. I don't have naked girls on it. I don't have catchy phrases. Hell, I don't even talk good. What I do do is speak the truth as I see it. That may differ from what you see. But if it does, so be it. In closing, I'd like to wish all Americans a great day. I wish they'd all wake their fucking asses up and get out of looking for what's the newest, shiniest gizmo that they can buy. Let's start trying to cure this homeless problem. Use some of these empty buildings we got open. Put them in there. Spend a little money making them into little apartments for the people. At least divide them up so they have some privacy, security, an address. And maybe they can start getting back on their feet. If you take away the people's pride, they have nothing left to live for. So what do you want to do? It's up to you. And me. But... To any of my friends that happen to see this, if I've upset you, I'm somewhat sorry. But there's words out there that people need to hear. If you take away the internet, people are not going to hear. They're going to end up putting their head in that little silver box that's on there living room table or on their refrigerator or in their bedroom and going, Duh, it's such a great life. Did you know what Joey did to Sandy on this show? Da, da, da. Who the fuck cares? The other point I want to make, this is a personal message to all those fucking multi-millionaire clowns that like to disrespect the flag that I've known people that have died for. You make millions of dollars playing a fucking schoolyard game. The least you could do is say it, show the respect for the people that gave you the right to do so. 
I don't give a shit if you're mad at the cops. I don't give a shit if you're mad about you didn't sleep with the homecoming queen or your dick's not big enough. You damn sure should stand for the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem. Because this is the country that's allowed you to make millions of dollars sitting on your fat ass playing a goddamn stupid game. The other thing is most of these millionaire ball players, whether it be basketball, football, baseball, gotta wonder, could they hold a real job? Or do they have to punch in nine to five and work the whole eight hours? Manual labor. Not sitting on their ass, glad handling and shaking hands and signing autographs. I'm talking actual sweating, breaking your back, putting your dick in the dirt, and work. Might be something to think about. Look at it this way it's trained for when you get too old for that goddamn bed in there. You know? People just need to grow the fuck up. You need to respect this country if you're going to live here. And as for these clowns that say they want to, they're going to move to Canada if Trump gets elected. I still say, well, pack your fucking bags and reserve your ticket. Just remember, it gets all goddamn cold up there. <clears throat> Hope you speak French too, you know. Parlez vous fuck fucko. Yeah, I've had a few. General need you to get on this. But no matter who wins this election, whether it's Hillary or Donald. I'm willing to bet there's going to be war in the streets. I hope to hell I'm wrong. These politicians have done nothing but divide this country. It's so damn bad. But people don't know what end is up anymore. They're more worried about what's on Monday Night Football or what's happening on Big Brother or God forbid we miss the Big Bang Theory or any of those other shows, you know. To people that watch the alternate media like I do, to get another side to the news, I hope we still have it tomorrow. As for me, one dumb redneck. About half drunk, and I'll admit it. But uh, I'd like to wish you all a wonderful day. If you want to comment, please do. I don't care either way. I really don't give a rat's ass. But I guarantee you this. If I see your comments, good, bad, or indifferent, I will answer that's just the way I am. Y'all have yourself a good day, good night, good evening, good morning.